Hey guys and welcome back to Crime Cafe. Today I'm going to be bringing you a little bit of a different type of video. I've been following the Gabby Petito case really closely and trying to follow all of the facts and I really wanted to bring together a visual timeline for people. I'm a very visual person so seeing just some words on you know on my screen it's hard for me to piece everything together. So I wanted to bring you a timeline where I show you what happened on each day and then I'll show you the pictures that they posted or any information that was shared with the public. I will put that all in this video for you. There is a lot of speculation, a lot of theories, a lot of things that we don't know. And I'm in a few groups. The people following this case are truly amazing and they are trying to put the pieces together and really bring justice for Gabby. And I just find it completely incredible. So with that being said, I'm going to get right into Gabby's timeline. Gabby and Brian Laundrie started dating on March 17, 2019. It was a little over a year later in July of 2020 when they officially got engaged. Both of their families are originally from New York. Brian's family moved to Florida and he moved with them and Gabby wanted to be with her boyfriend. Gabby and Brian decided that they wanted to live the van life and start a YouTube channel and travel to all different national parks in the United States states from July to the end of October. They were supposed to make it back home on Halloween of 2021. Their first stop was July 4th and the 5th at Monument Rock. They stayed here for a few days and then they made their way to Colorado Springs for July 8th. Two days later, on July 10th, they were in Great Sand Dunes. Then a week after that, on July 16th and 17th, they were in the Zion National Park. July 18th, they were at the Narrows Zion, and July 20th, they were at Cedar Breaks. July 21st through the 24th, they were at Bryce Canyon, and Brian posted on Instagram, thank you for putting up with me. If you notice, the dates on these Instagram posts, they were extremely active, both of them, were extremely active on posting on social media quite a lot. On July 26th, they were in Mystic Hot Springs and she just really looks to be enjoying herself. So July 28th, their website was officially created. July 29th, they were in the Canyonlands National Park, Mesa Arch. If you notice, July 31st is the last time that they posted on Instagram. They did not post again until August 12th. So that's almost two weeks later. I find that a little weird. I would love to know what happened during that time because that's out of character for both of them. I find it really weird that neither one of them posted for that long. And then on the 12th, when they started to post again, was the day that they got pulled over from the cops for fighting. Were the two weeks, were they building up to that? Was there a lot of fighting in during that time? I don't think we'll ever know. I just feel like that time is really pivotal in their relationship. So then on August 12th, they got pulled over by the police officers because police got a 911 call stating that a man was hitting a woman and he chased her down the sidewalk. The body cam footage when the police pulled them over, it seems like the police officers have no idea that it was Brian who was physically hitting Gabby. All they knew and saw was that Gabby was hitting Brian right when they were pulling them over. So I think they did a good job by pulling them apart. The body cam footage was really telling for me and for a lot of people. Um, I have seen plenty of women, even men, state that they could tell that this was an abusive relationship just by Gabby's gestures, um, the way that she carries herself, the way that she speaks to the officers, the way that she takes on the blame, and the way that Brian belittles her. Um, he makes her to be smaller, he pins her as a, a crazy woman, and you know, just emotional, and he might be a victim because she might leave him there. 
um, just really pinning her to be the bad guy. People who have been in abusive relationships understand this um, more than they would like to. Like I stated in one of my videos before, I am no stranger to domestic violence. I was in an eight-year-long abusive relationship from 14 to 22, and I saw this immediately. Um, you take on the blame, but you care so much about the person. Like Gabby was saying, you know, don't let him forget his phone charger. She wasn't thinking of herself. And that is just the game. She was already mentally and emotionally in that state where you are not really yourself anymore. You're not really your own person. So the not wanting to be left alone, not not feeling confident enough to ride, to drive the van herself, um, crying when she says he, you know, doesn't think that I could do it. And it's just very telling her body language, the way that she acts, the way that he acts. It's a very telling situation that you, you can see, um, if you're trained in that, or if you have been through it yourself, you can see clearly that that is an abusive relationship and there's something going on there. I do think that the police officers handled it really well. They did pull them apart. Um, they, I have seen and read that they did not get the information that Gabby was the one that was being hit. They only saw her hitting him in the vehicle. So that is understandable. Um, they did ask her quite a few times if he hit her and she said about grabbing the face. The officers separated them for the night and I, I do think that that was a good call. You have to. They did their job and I do think that they did their job well um, for the, the facts that they knew at the time. So they spend the night apart Gabby has the van and Brian goes to a hotel. Then on August 13th, they post a picture of them in Utah. Then on August 17th through the 23rd, Brian flies home to Florida to supposedly help his father move their belongings into a storage unit. Now I do want to say that as far as I can gather, people are not really sure what happened during that time. Stated that that's what he was supposed to be doing. Um, we have no idea if that's actually what he was doing. On August 19th, their first and only YouTube video is posted and their Instagram post was actually a repost from a photo that from a story from about six weeks prior to that date. On August 21st was Gabby's last FaceTime or call with her dad. I'm not sure if it was a FaceTime or a phone call, but she was in the hotel room while Brian was back at home and she was working on her blog. She was trying to update it and she was having some troubles. So she had her dad on the phone and he was trying to help her with that. And she mentioned that she was hungry and he ordered her pizza through Uber Eats because that's just, you know, dad taking care of his little girl. Then on August 24th, Brian and Gabby were seen checking out of Fairfield Inn in Salt Lake City. And the following day on August 25th was the last time Gabby FaceTimed her mom. And this will be Gabby's last Instagram post. It's speculated that maybe she was saving it for the end of their trip because they were supposed to end on Halloween. Um, the caption reads, happy Halloween. On August 27th, Gabby's mom gets a text from her saying that she's headed to Yellowstone. On August 29th, Gabby was actually supposed to meet up with that friend and Yellowstone, but she didn't show. On August 30th, Gabby's mom receives her last text from her phone stating no service in Yosemite. Also on the 27th, Gabby's mom received a really alarming text message from her daughter that said, can you help Stan? I just keep getting his voicemails and missed calls. Stan is Gabby's grandfather and she never referred to him by his first names. So Gabby's mom thought that that was extremely weird because she never uses her grandfather's first name. Then on September 1st, Brian returns to Florida in the van without Gabby. During this time, Gabby's parents are trying to get a hold of her and there is no answer. There is no answer for Brian. There is no answer when they call Brian's parents' house. So parents are thinking that something is wrong with the kids, um, both of them, because they don't know that Brian's home. 
and so she's getting extremely worried. And on September 11th, they finally file a missing persons report for Gabby. And this is the same day that they found the van and took that into custody. Brian and his parents said nothing to the police. They just requested a lawyer. On September 14th, officers are seen at Brian Laundrie's house dropping some paperwork off. Brian's lawyer also makes a statement. A vehicle is possessed by police and Brian Laundry is listed as a person of interest at this time. On September 15th, that's when Gabby's stepfather heads to Wyoming to help search for her. And that is when the body cam footage of the police incident on August 12th was out to the public. The Petito family attorney has a news briefing on this day also. So on September 17th, Brian's parents want to speak to the police and they actually report their son missing. They said that they have not seen their son since that Tuesday, which would be September 14th. There is also po police officials seen going into the home, taking evidence bags inside the home. On September 19th is when the search for Brian begins. The police announce that they have access to both cell phone data. The police got a tip from another YouTuber. They're actually recording their own van life and they came upon Gabby's van and they sent that information to the FBI. They had a search party out in that area when they found human remains that were consistent with the description of Gabby Petito. This is also the day that they got a search warrant for Brian's home and then on September 21st is when it was confirmed that the remains found were that of Gabby Petito. On September 23rd, the U.S. District Court of Wyoming issued a federal arrest warrant for Brian Laundrie. As of today, it is the 24th of September, they are currently searching for Brian laundry in the Carlton Reserve. They have so many people. They have so much equipment. They have dogs. They have divers. They have vehicles that can drive in swampy areas. They are searching for him. They are giving it all they have and um, now it's just, it is officially a manhunt for Brian Laundry. That concludes my timeline. Of course, I'm going to keep updating everything. I'm going to keep covering this case. If you know anything else, if you have any other information that you would want to share with me that I didn't cover, please feel free to leave that in the comments below. Um, I am obsessed with this case. I think a lot of us are, and we're just very much invested into it. I stated earlier, I am in groups um, on Facebook that pertain to Gabby and I saw so many posts about women that were victims of domestic abuse and how they are extremely invested in this case and when, you know, because they see themselves in Gabby, they can relate to most likely her situations, um, they can relate to, you know, the fear, the feeling of being in an abusive relationship. And I also saw, after Gabby was found, I saw so many posts of people stating that they needed to pull away. They needed some time for themselves uh, because it was a major, major trigger for them. And I will be completely vulnerable here, but I really want to let you know if you were ever in an abusive relationship, um, I don't like saying domestic abuse victim because I don't think we're not victims, um, we're survivors. And I want to make it clear that you noticing that it triggers you you taking a step back and being able to give yourself that is huge in itself. You're thinking of yourself. You're giving yourself something that you need 
which you weren't able to do at one point in your life. So be proud of yourself for that. Another thing that I want to cover, because this can be a really overwhelming feeling when you're so heavily invested in someone's case and you are thinking of maybe that maybe it's going to be okay um you know maybe this is happening maybe that's happening i read so many fairy tale type endings um that people were really fantasizing about a good outcome for gabby and when it wasn't it's a major trigger because there were plenty of times in our own situations that our life was in someone else's hands, right? There were times where you're thinking to yourself, this is it, this is gonna be it. Um, when you have someone that's stronger than you and overpowering you, you know what that feels like. You know what you think in that moment and you're just hoping that they let go or they stop. Um, and for Gabby, he didn't. So I want you to know that it is okay to feel grateful that you survived. And I wanna make it clear when I'm talking about domestic violence, it is towards women and men. It is not just women that get uh, abused. So I want to make that clear that it is both men and women who are in abusive relationships and it's very important to acknowledge that. If you want to add anything, go ahead and leave some comments um, below. I have a Psycho Sunday series that I'm doing um, with along with tons of other um, cases that I'm going to be covering. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead and click the subscribe button, hit the bell so you can get notified when I upload a video, and thank you so much for being here. Bye.